struggling with getting your bed level on your printer, just finding it really hard to get it to work right and get it done? Well, join me today as I talk about three ways to make that job a little easier. See you inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, as I said in the intro, bed leveling. The bane of most 3D printers. Because what's the number one problem you might run into with your printer is your bed's not level or it's off just a little bit enough to throw your print off or cause your printer to clog or who knows what problem it's gonna cause. But a lot of time the root problem is your bed's not level enough. So it's a common problem we all have and struggle with. Even I struggle with it. But there's ways to make that bed leveling process easier because I get onto some sites and I see people commenting that I've leveled it a hundred times and I'm still not getting it right. Well, today I'm going to talk about three things that can help you get your bed level and help keep it level to get you moving forward. So let's move on to number three. So many of you have seen it. It's the paper method where you put the paper on the table, you get your nozzle down just enough, and you move the thing where when you're moving the paper back and forth, it should just start to snugly pull on the paper and then you move the nozzle and you do it again. And you do it again and again and again and again. And then you repeat the whole process multiple times and it still doesn't seem like it gets there. Well, this is the tried and true method that a lot of 3D printer companies push you to use. But is it the best method? I'm not gonna say yes or no, because I can't really tell you because your printer is your printer. You may have a glass bed, you may have a mirror bed, you may have your Z um, stepper in the wrong, at the wrong height. It could be too low, it could be too high, allowing your, your Z axis not to get towards your table right. Your table could be loose. A lot of things can throw off bed leveling, but the paper method does have validity. Um, I use it a lot of times on a lot of printers to just see how far off I am or it lets me push on the plate to see if I'm loose, see if I need to tighten the bolts underneath to get the wheels tight so the bed's not wobbling. Um, but the paper method does work. It's just one of those things, it's annoying because <laughs> um, you have to go through and you have to do it multiple times. We're going to kick back here into the shop in a second and actually go through leveling a machine with the paper method here in a minute. But it does work, so don't give up on it. My recommendation is find nine points on your table and do that. So three in the front, three in the middle, three in the back, and try that paper method, because you're gonna get your four corners, but even if you get your four corners perfect, that doesn't mean your center is perfect. Your table could be warped. There is different things that could be involved, but there are other methods to help out and try to make this a little easier too, and I'm gonna talk about another one of those here in a second. Stick with me as we move on. Okay, so paper method. It's really actually kind of simple, but annoying at the same time. So what you gotta do is go to your control panel, go to prepare. Now I'm doing this on an Ender 3 V2, auto home your printer. So that'll take a second to run. It's gonna take your printer to home and set to your, your uh, stepper. That way your um, X axis is in the home position your nozzle is going to be where it is in the bed. Now, some people do this different ways. My method is, once I'm auto leveled, you can't go in and disable the steppers and do it with the printer on. I turn the printer off. It's just the way I do it. It's worked for me in the past, and that's the way I like doing it. So now, this is movable. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my table forward a little bit. I've got that guy sitting there. And what should happen is I should be able to slide this paper under the nozzle. Now, if I can't do that, which you can see I can't, that's not right. So I'm going to tighten on my spring a little bit to bring that down. Tell that paper goes under my nozzle, which it's still not doing, so I need to keep tightening. Now, one thing you can do too is just kind of look for a gap to form under between the nozzle and the printing head. All right, so now I can move it, but it's too loose. So I need to loosen, loosen it just enough for it grips that paper. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to go too tight. You just want to have a tight grip. Repeat the process. I usually do a nine point 
three in the front, three in the middle of the plate, and three in the back of the plate. Now, I've got a clip here, which makes this a little bit more difficult, but I'm still not able to get under the nozzle, so I'm too high. Now I am, but I'm loose, so I need to, oh, too tight. So it's just fine adjustments. You may do this nine or 10 times until you get it right. See, that's still too tall or too, too tight. But now I can move it, we're good. Now I'll pull my table towards me and I keep repeating the process. Now, usually what I do is I do the front, then the back, then I try my center. A lot of people just do the four corners, which really, it doesn't work all that well. It kind of makes a mess of it. So, because your bed could be warped for all you know, or your piece of glass, there could be a lot of issues. But as you can see, as I drag that back, it drug across the table. We don't want that. So we're gonna tighten that up a little bit and we're just gonna keep going. Same thing over and over again. Now, one thing too, if you crank this and you're trying to level it and you've got these cranked all the way down, this guy's too low. This guy right here is too low. You need to move him up a little bit so you're getting actual space for your table to breathe. Because, well, let's be honest, that's important. Your table has to have motion. Now, another thing I mentioned earlier too is your bed wobble. My bed is tight. If your bed's wobbling underneath your bed, you need to tighten, um, you need to tighten your rollers because you shouldn't have a wobble in your bed at all. It should be tight. Um, that can be thrown off your bed level as well, as I discussed. But you just keep going around the table with the paper method until you get it to where you're snug on all your corners. And there you go. And we'll move on to the, uh, the second method on the number two. So number two is the machinist gauge. So you can print a frame to go on your hot end mount that will let you get this on here. Now you push this on. This is for a uh, Ender 3 V2 is what this mount is. They make the mounts for the Ender 3s as well. These mounts are on Thingiverse. The gauge was a $15 machinist gauge. Um, I paid $15 for this at Harbor Freight. Um, it's a good little gauge. It can help you get your bed level a lot easier than the paper method because you're tr you're trying to get it zero. You're trying to get that zeroed in to get your bed level. So there are digital versions of this as well available. They're usually about twice as much as machinist gauge. This gauge is out on Amazon, but it's usually more expensive. Um, you may for this basic gauge like this, you probably will spend twenty to forty dollars. I think I spent fifteen. I think I got this on sale and had a coupon with Harbor Freight. But you'll spend about $15. And like I said, the frames, they make the frames for the CR10 and Ender 3s, um, the Ender 3 Pro. They make that frame as well. I have that frame. The frames are out on Thingiverse. Description down below. But we'll take you back there and we'll show you how to do this one. Stick with me. Okay, here we are back in the shop. And we're going to do the um, gauge leveling method. Now I'm going to have my hand on here to kind of help keep this on here. But we're going to go, there's G, plenty of G codes out there you can get to actually do this. I'm going to go to my print. I'm going to go to bed alignment. Make sure your bed's hot when you do this. And we're going to get this guy working the way we should. Now, this does levels all four corners. Once you're done, this should be perfectly level. Got it down to a zero point. So we'll make a minor adjustment just to make sure we're sitting right at zero. And then we're gonna go across the table. Make another adjustment. Make another adjustment, get that to zero. Press that one a little bit. And 
And there we go, level bed. All by moving it around with the gauge through the G-code. Now you don't have to use the G-code, you can do this manually if you want to, but that's one way of getting it done. And when you're done, just pop her off. You're ready to rock and roll. Are you ready for a print or a bed leveling test? Thank you guys. So the final thing, number three, that I'm gonna talk about is auto bed level. This is a helpful tool, but does not replace the other two methods with leveling your bed. This is an automated method. This is a BL Touch um, sensor in that you'll put on your printer. You have to update your firmware and do a bunch of steps to make this guy work. But this does not mean you do not have to bed level anymore. This is an assistant to bed leveling. So what this does is it detects minor differences in your bed and mathematically corrects for your print to, to be more level. That does not mean you do not have to bed level anymore. Please do not have that assumption because this guy goes around and it senses where your table is with this sensor. Now, there's also the Easy ABL from TH3D, which I have on two printers here. And this guy is gonna go on my Ender 3 v 2 Stick with me, stick with the channel, subscribe if you like what you're seeing, because that's a video coming is this is going on an Ender 3 v 2 um, that you guys have seen me put together, firmware issues and different things like that. But putting this on does help, but it does not eliminate the other two methods. The Easy ABL, same thing. It's looking for minor differences to mathematically correct your print. So what that means is it it's, looks for minor shifts. So if one corner is a little too high, it's gonna correct for that. But if your bed is just way off, auto bed leveling ain't gonna save you. It's one of those things, it's a helpful tool, but it doesn't fix the problem for you. You've gotta use, you've gotta level your bed. Um, and like I said, bed level can be thrown off by a lot of things. But one of the key things to remember is we're leveling the bed to the nozzle. You can't just get a bubble level and throw this in there and make sure your bed is perfectly level because that isn't gonna work. Now, some things too to check into. Auto bed leveling is great. And I'm gonna show you one of my printer taking off with the going through the process of it. But that's another video that's gonna come up. I'm just discussing this right now. But auto bed leveling, it does have its advantage, especially if your bed, if you're sprinting little things, it can correct and keep going. But you are gonna have to level your bed, you're gonna have to learn about Z offset, and you're gonna have to change G codes and Cura, update your firmware and all that to install that. So it can be a task to install these sometimes. Now, Creality printers, Creality puts out the firmware to update your printer to have this on. Where TH3D also has great firmware for the Easy ABL. Their customer support is fantastic. And there's a lot of perks to joining up with them. So each product is really good. I haven't personally used the BL Touch. This is gonna be my first time using this. I've used the Easy ABL. I like it a lot. Um, it's on two of my six printers. Um, it works really well. The firmware installation is not that hard. They have great YouTube videos and stuff out there to help you. There's a lot of videos out on YouTube to install this as well. Um, I'm hoping this goes pretty smooth and we can get some good info out on this one for you guys coming up in a future video. But bed leveling is key. So we're going to get into it and we're going to talk about some more of the bed leveling. But right now, this is just a highlight video of getting yourself started. So off to the back to the shop, show you how this one works. Okay, and what you're seeing here is the Ender 3 with an easy ABL. Um, from TH3D go through and do its bed leveling. So the Easy ABL is a sensor. It doesn't actually touch the plate, but it's gonna go through nine different points and figure out where the bed is at. Now the bed is pretty much level. I've done a couple prints, so it probably does need to be leveled again, but this guy's gonna go through and mathematically figure out what it needs to adjust in my code to print my print correctly. So as I said, nine points, it's going to look at that table. So, and as that goes through, this will hopefully make the adjustments in the software and let me get a good print.
So those are three methods of bed leveling that you can use to help keep your printer running smooth and keep things going. Guys, bed leveling is critical to anything that you do with 3D printing. If your bed's not level, your print's gonna mess up or it's not gonna be right and it's just gonna not make you happy. You're gonna waste filament and you're gonna get discouraged. Bed leveling is a critical tool to getting this job done. So it's something we all have to learn. Now what I showed you is three things to get to the job. So two actual bed leveling methods and then a technology that can help fix the minor issues that is in your plate such with it being off by a little bit. Don't always trust auto bed leveling to be the cure all end all, it's not. It's just a way to fix minor issues. If your bed is way off, if your bed is wobbling or anything like that, that's not gonna save you. So these are just three things that I thought would be helpful to especially the people just getting started on figuring out how to level your bed. If you enjoyed what you saw today, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. That really does help me out. And I really do appreciate the scribes as we keep moving through different teaching methods and different things to make this printing process easier for you as you go along. So um, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. I wanna know your questions because your questions may turn into a video. It may turn into me just talking to you. So thank you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.